Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at five different scenarios for Arthur in which we determine what is the best filing status for Arthur. Now this could appear as a CPA simulation on the CPA exam. This could be an exercise in your college course. On the CPA exam it might look something like this and you might have a drop down box where you would select for example single or you would select something like head of a household or whatever the filing status you think that fits that of Arthur. So it's very important to understand the filing status. In the prior session, I explained all filing status. In this session, we will try to practice. We will try to work an exercise. Why? The reason you do so is to test your knowledge. Do you, do you understand what we did in the lecture? Now, test your knowledge. Well, it might clarify certain topics, or it might say, great, it's confirming what I understood is correctly, and you could move on. Let's go ahead and get started. Arthur lives alone but he supports a household where his elderly mother lives. His mother meets the criteria to be considered his, de her, his dependent, but his father does not. So he supports his mother. His mother is his dependent. She lives in another home. Would his mother qualify him as a head of a household? So since he is not married, his two options are single, head of a household. We're not told he's, he's, he lives alone. Okay? So would his mother that she's living in another house, qualify him? Although his father does not qualify, and the answer is yes. As long as one of the parents qualify, Arthur will be able to claim head of a household filing status. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Arthur lives alone. He still lives alone, but he maintains a household where his daughter Maria and Maria's husband Ingrid, son-in-law, live. Both Maria and her husband qualify as his dependent. Well, Arthur is not married, so what's his options? Single, head of a household. Can he file ahead of a household? Well, let me tell you, Arthur is a pretty generous person, but the exception applies to the parents. So since his daughter does not live with him, now, if his daughter and son-in-law, they live with him in the same household, he will be able to claim head of a household. You might be saying, but his mother did not. Yes, there's an exception for parents, but not anyone else, not kids. Let's take a look at the third scenario. Arthur maintains a household where he and his close friend Stephen live. Stephen meet the requirement to be considered a dependent. Well, so again, Arthur is single. It's either single or head of a household. Now, we are told that Stephen is a dependent. However, you have to understand, for the purpose of a household qualification, the relationship test has to be met. And member of a household, which is Stephen is a member of a household, does not get you to the household filing status. So a dependent, yes, we are told Stephen is a dependent, but there is no relationship. You might be saying, but they live together. It's a household. It's they are part of a member of the same household. Yes, they are. But that relationship does not apply and gives you head of a household status. Therefore, Arthur will have to file as a single. Arthur maintains a household where he lives with his mother-in-law. That's fine. Arthur, wi Arthur wives passed in the prior year. Well, let's see. So he, his, he was married. His, let's assume this is this is year 20x3. His wife passed away in 20x2. So we're looking at 20x3. What are his options? What are Arthur's options? Well, since his wife passed away, what happened is this. You could either go back to single or qualify widow or widower if your spouse passes away. To qualify as a, to qualify as a qualified widow or widower, you have to have a child. So he doesn't have a child, so that's out. He lives with his mother-in-law, maintain a household. Now, we are not told that his mother-in-law is his dependent, okay? Well, if we assume that his mother-in-law is his dependent, 
then head of a household. Why? Because the relationship do exist under those circumstances. There's a relationship. In-law, son-in-law, mother-in-law, those are, those exist. But we cannot make this assumption. If we cannot make this assumption, Arthur will default back to single. Okay? Qualify widow or widower? No, no dependent child. As long as, as long as his mother-in-law is a dependent, she meets the relationship test. He will be head of a household, but we cannot make this assumption here. Therefore, his status is single, back to single. Now, let's assume, change the scenario, Arthur's wife disappeared rather than passed away. So, let's assume since since 20 x 2, his wife basically disappeared, ran away. Well, what would happen? Well, he's married. When you're married, you could either married filing jointly, married filing separately because his wife does not does not live with him now there's another option there's the abandoned spouse type of situation well yes the abandoned spouse would apply but you need a child as well there's no child still married abandoned spouse doesn't apply there's no child because the mother-in-law cannot be considered a child therefore his only option is married filing separately which is disadvantageous disadvantageous status but that's what's available for them what should you do now to understand filing status, you got to go to Farhat Lectures, look at the lectures, look at additional exercises, multiple choice, true false. That's going to help you understand this topic. Whether you are a CPA exam candidate, whether you are an enrolled agent candidate studying for the enrolled agent exam, or you are an accounting student, invest in your career, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.